Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the first uh, kind of match review update for the AFCON. I ultimately decided to not do it daily because um, A, it is, you know, it will be very short videos that I still kind of work uh, to make, especially the graphics that I will show you and B, and, the, and that's the more important uh, thing is. While I have been having the AFCOM matches largely on, it's usually one max two per day and it's kind of on the side while I'm uh, either working or doing something else. So for that reason, I think it's much better that I give you an overall overview. Also, uh, and let's start with the obvious. The matches weren't all that great, but that's exactly what we expected. You do not watch the AFCON necessarily for um, the great matches. For me, the main reason to watch the AFCON is A, the atmosphere there, which is a completely different atmosphere there, that you get at a Euro, European game. And even though most stadiums are half empty, you always have the, uh, the spectators, you know, either with vuvuzelas or with drums uh, singing. It's very colorful, uh, which is the stuff that I absolutely love about the AFCON. You have the wonderful jerseys. Uh, and there's also this kind of anachronism to it because the pitches are not all that great which of course plays hugely into uh the style of play so uh that is a is a feature but and you know the stadiums are all not all that glitzy then um i had this discussion and i want to address it now though the, even uh if you look at some of the jerseys here the, the names they are such so plain it is uh, the refereeing is. I mean, if you were complaining about <laughs> the Premier League refereeing, uh, wait until you see the AFCON. And you know, it's this kind of um, anachronistic and a little bit um, how, to, how, how to say, I don't want to say amateurish because you have really great players up there and great teams, but then they are mixed in with some smaller teams. It's this variety that makes the AFCON just special. And the whole atmosphere around it is uh, probably better than any other tournament. And just if you have watched yesterday uh, Mali's win over Tunisia, I am wearing Mali. Um, just the shot in the background of the stadium with the little hills up there. Uh, all I need and I don't care then that the matches are that great because there are too many storylines but yes we will talk about uh, the matches for sure my or as I said overall it wasn't all that great if you from a um, aesthetic perspective if you are used to your even a good World Cup match um, but I also think what I what bugged me was a little bit of scheduling because almost all the big games that one looks forward to in the group stage were are already played. We had already, I mean, Cameron Burkina Faso was the top ma match of at least nom nominally in the group. This was the opener. Okay, for an opener, great opener. And we'll talk about that opener. Uh, but then we already had Morocco, Ghana, uh, Nigeria, Egypt, which probably was the outstanding fixture of the first round. And then um, uh, Tunisia, Mali. Those were uh, three of four 1v2 seed matchups already in the first round. And I also think that this plays a huge role into how the, um, uh, you know, that the um, games are not uh, as exciting because those teams need to build up momentum. And at first you don't want to actually lose against the big team. Uh, it is kind of, you know, it's a little bit statement. I, I would think that if the first round is a little bit more uh, big, a team against a smaller opponent there might be more excitement coming uh but you know let's just, just, just one observation on the other side you know senegal against zimbabwe this was not one v2 that took a whole lot of time to uh get going in many ways so yeah maybe i'm wrong but uh that's one thing that i that that really really bugged me also the kick of times all those big games are played at five o'clock uh, local time here in Europe, and I think it's probably the same in Africa, uh, which also to me doesn't, uh, you know, have it at least at eight o'clock. The eight o'clock ma 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 matches are all some that, you know, uh, this is for the real, uh, how do I say, the real diehard AFCON fans, which uh, honestly I'm not quite there yet, but I, I'm a big proponent of the AFCON as an absolutely fun tournament. Okay, so that's ahead of it. There was also, I had the feeling, uh, most goals were penalties. 
That's another observation that I have. And that leads us uh, immediately to the um, opening game, which I think was probably the best game uh, so far, at least the, the best game that I have seen. Um, where Cameron actually were really called out. I was also called out. If you saw the jersey re review, uh, the Burkina Faso away jerseys, although still great, suddenly have a little sliver there, which would, if I would have known that, would have dropped it. Without the sliver, that jersey looks awesome, as in the review with that one, it would drop. And you know, I've, I call this being AFCON, because uh, there was another occasion where I really saw, oh yeah, I have I have not pulled out the right jersey there, because I... <laughs> I rely on footy headlines, which uh, you shouldn't always do, to be honest. But yeah, I thought that Burkina Faso was really well in the, into the game and, and caught uh, Cameron on the wrong foot. Uh, took, took the game there and uh, Onana really didn't look good. Uh, was very shaky and that they took the lead in the 24th minute through Zangare uh, was just a consequence of the good play that Burkina Faso had. However, what Cameroon had is a little bit of ref on their side, but also uh, sloppy defending, which is also something you see in the AFCON, uh, with two uh, penalties given uh, Cameroon just before the half, Abu Bakar converting both, and I felt this was a little bit unfair to Burkina Faso. So, yes, maybe the pressure is there, and I guess you can defend both penalties. I'm not, um, not giving that, I'm not saying that. Uh, but you know, if you see a host nation getting two penalties in a short period, period, period of time uh, to save them from a loss to Burkina Faso, um, you always have a little bit of fishy stuff. But the penalties itself are not contentious. And then Cameroon kind of saw it out because Burkina Faso couldn't find the second gear. But I have to say, this first half, at least, this was the best thing that we saw. Uh, Cape Verde could beat Ethiopia, which. Um, will put them into a pretty good uh, position going forward. Uh, what else have we got? Senegal, I already mentioned it, rather late gets their win uh, over um, uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, it was kind of, uh, you're waiting, is the goal coming, is the goal coming? No, it is not coming. And then suddenly, uh, very late on, uh, it then came and yeah, uh, so we have one of the tournament favorites off to a very, very shaky start. They are head on with uh, Guinea. Morocco Ghana was another one of those games that were kind of, you know, you thought it's going to a nil nil. I honestly uh, couldn't follow it that, that close and laid on Buffal scores the winner, something that will put, as we'll see, Morocco in a pretty good position. Uh, Gabon get the win, uh, expected win over the uh, Cocomoros. Algeria struggling big time against uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, only a nil-nil. And then probably the most convincing team performance, and I was surprised by the jersey matchup, but I think it worked really well. Nigeria against Egypt. Nigeria, I fully deserving of the one-nil win. I think it should have been more. Uh, Egypt didn't look quite right. And you know, uh, if you cannot give the supply line to Mohamed Salah, you're always going to struggle. And this is the big struggle. That Egypt is, uh, they have probably the biggest star of the tour tournament. But the rest of the, of, of the team is not all that well put together, whereas with Nigeria, even though they had big misses, I mean, uh, Victor Oziman, uh, chief of them, th they looked really good and they were the one team that from the get-go uh, went forward, um, uh, attacked Egypt and got the goal through Iheanacho, uh, deserved 1-0 win, I think it should have been 2-0 to be honest. So uh, this was for me the team performance so far. And I gotta, gotta, gotta say, from what I've seen in the first round, Nigeria looks to me almost the favorites at the moment, although um, nominally they are still not. Um, interesting stuff, uh, Sudan, yeah, they play suddenly in Adidas jerseys, uh, where they had solo sports in my review, which I've shot, so I probably have to put this in a little bit. I have, I have not edited it for, for, for sure. But they also switched the jerseys, uh, my buddy Idris pointed that one out, so just wanted to mention that. Tunisia Mali, <laughs> that was a fun, I mean, I only joined in the second half, which, from what I hear, was not a bad choice <laughs> to begin with, because uh, uh, the first half was pretty dreary. Um, I actually have, have to say, while I, in my jersey review, and I know you have not seen it because it is not out yet, I a little bit slammed those green jerseys, I still not, don't like it, but paired with the yellow pants, I actually like that look. Uh, gotta be honest, um, but you know, still the jersey, this one is better, and the previous one, even the yellow one, the yellow ones are better. 
uh, in any, any case, uh, early penalty actually, and this is what most of the AFCON games really need. They need a goal to get maybe going. And here the goal uh, came uh, through uh, Kone. I think the penalty was all right, but then um, Tunisia themselves got a penalty, but the referee completely lost, lost the ball. At one point, it seemed like he has given a free kick to Mali when they were, uh, 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 the Tunisian player clearly was being brought down. Uh, that it needed VAR, and he cannot, and you kind of saw already up until the point suddenly uh, the ref was losing, but the Tunisian coach and uh, staff were really desperate uh, with those refereeing decisions. It was not a good show at all. Uh, but I think the most exciting uh, moment was uh, when Carceri's penalty was actually saved. And then Tunisia tried, couldn't really get it going. I mean, Carceri, I think, had a shot, uh, a free kick over the bar or, some, or something like that. But uh, Mali were basically riding the luck. And then the real chaos came uh, <laughs> when, uh, when Touré got sent off straight and it was even looked at a VAR. I think there were three times that the ref went on into the VAR box. So an 87 to race send off. But it was 89 minutes and a bit over 30 seconds on the clock and the referee blows the whistle and you already thought in the 85th he had blown the whistle. To everyone's consternation. Uh, and I totally can't can understand. I mean, there were three VAR incidents and the referee blows the whistle before it hits 90. And of course, the Tunisian staff just lost it there and went all over there. I mean, he then needed security or whatever. whatever. This was to be the, the dodgiest refereeing uh, that I have seen. Okay, so this is the first round in the in the books. I mean, Ivory, Ivory, I know I have to say, Ivory, the Ivory Coast yesterday won also uh, a Gradel, great goal. But other than that, I have to say, Ivory Coast did not look all that, that great. Ecuador, Guinea probably would have deserved a draw in that one. And yeah, I don't like those Ivory Coast away jerseys in any case. Okay, so this is the first match day in, in the books. We have now in the upcoming uh, days, I think um, the big one is, is a two o'clock kick, kick, kick of is Senegal against Guinea. This is a 1v2 matchup that I'm really looking forward to. I'm actually looking at Cameroon to do something better against Ethiopia. Uh, Cape Verde Burkina Faso is one that can decide over the second, will decide over the second spot probably behind Cameroon. So that I think is an interesting match. Ma ma I'm looking especially uh, Morocco and Ghana um, to improve their performance. Morocco probably can boost their goal difference if they want. Gabon could hold their own against Ghana. Let's see that. Um, bounce back for Egypt definitely need against Guinea Bissau, Nigeria. Hopefully, uh, uh, I should not hopefully, should win. And then I'm also looking at Algeria against Equatorial Guinea a little bit. We have not seen much of Algeria so far. So uh, those are matches that I want to look forward. I will spare you the actual standings and we'll go right into the projections because uh, quite a few things have changed and the tree looks completely different than my first projection at the moment. Or the bracket, I should say. Uh, we have uh, the Cape Verde at the moment is ahead of Burkina Faso. Yeah, if you win and lose. <laughs> so uh, that game is a pretty big one. We also have Gabon ahead of Ghana. So that Gabon-Ghana matchup that I talked talk before, that will be uh, also an interesting one to look forward to. Nigeria, of course, ahead of Egypt now, but still both ahead of the other two, which is to be expected because those two are heads and shoulders above the rest, um, I would say. Then uh, same thing goes, I mean, there were a lot of changes in Group E, but now Algeria is in that second spot and I maintain that actually, I think Algeria finishing second might actually help them uh, a little bit. It's just a gut feeling that I have. And then uh, Mali and Gambia ahead of Tunisia. Tunisia only third spot, but it tells us how, I mean, the Gambia win was kind of unexpected, but it is still very, very tight. I would expect Tunisia to go into uh, second place uh, in that group. Uh, at least they're the, at least the projected best third place team. But you know, for now, it's still very, very early. But would that tree hold up? We have it very in, 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 interesting now. We, I mean, uh, as, as you see, we would look at the Algeria uh, Senegal quarterfinal, which is the re re of the previous final, the first quadrant screams all Nigeria. So Nigeria is definitely pro profiting from that. Cameron would have a, a match against Ghana, but then facing probably a slightly easier opponent before hitting Morocco. And it's now Egypt that would have a pretty, and the lower quadrant is low with the Ivory Coast, Egypt, Morocco, and Tunisia in there. 
Um, and then they have to play Cameroon and probably Algeria. I honestly don't think we'll have a North Africa final. What The one thing I've seen so far is that the North African teams are actually struggling more than the Sub-Saharan uh, teams. So while they both are highly rated, and that's why the projections are kind of flushing them forward, I do not foresee uh, one, if uh, I mean two for sure not, at most one North African team. I would expect to be in the final and one sub-Saharan African team uh, and probably one of Nigeria or Cameroon seem to be more likely although you don't know about Senegal depends on how where Algeria will land let's see about that in any case that was it from my review of match the one from the AFCON uh, please drop a line below if you've seen more of the AFCON than at me or if you have any other observations I would love to hear from you. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.